Hey YouTube, in today's video we're going to be doing an experiment that I alluded to in my previous video, the one on carbon, um, involving diamonds. And here they are again, it's my little vial of diamonds that I bought on eBay a while back. And we're going to be taking a small portion of those and burning them. So this is an experiment that I think most people wouldn't expect to, to be possible because, you know, diamonds are supposed to be forever and all that. But it actually is, and in fact, this is the way that they discovered that diamond is made of carbon by doing the experiment that I'm about to do. So this is kind of a historic recreation, I guess. So here are all the components of my apparatus, and I wanted to spend a minute talking about each of the parts because some of them are fairly special. So first is a oxygen cylinder that I got from Home Depot, uh, presumably for welding. Turns out it's actually really difficult to get the oxygen out of that cylinder because the threads on the top of the cylinder are different than normal threads. It's not the same as like a propane cylinder. So you have to get a special fitting for it and I guess they must do that so you don't confuse oxygen with propane in whatever system you're using it in. Makes it inconvenient for me though. So I had to go online and after a lot of searching, I found this little oxygen regulator that screws right onto the top of the cylinder. I wanted to demonstrate real quick how to use this regulator because it is not at all obvious. I had to go look at another video that showed how to use it. So you got your, your oxygen bottle and the, the, the real trick here is that these threads are reverse threads. So it's actually lefty tighty, which is weird. But anyways, uh, the other trick, what you want to do is open this valve, actually, before you put it on there. And that releases some of the pressure and it makes it easier to do. So you want to prop it up against you, um, put this on there, and then turn the whole bottle left. And there you go. It doesn't fit on there quite perfectly, uh, so don't screw it on too tight or you might strip the threads. But it seals well enough and it seems to work okay. And then when you want to take it off, you can leave it closed and it just pops right off. So the oxygen is going to flow from the cylinder, uh, come out of the regulator and go through this vinyl tubing, which connects to the next piece, which is a quartz glass tube. You see I wrote a Q on there for quartz. And this is a special piece that you actually do need. This tubing was the tricky part of setting this experiment up because you need a very particular type of tube for it to work. And essentially you need a very high melting point since you're, you're heating diamonds to red heat. So I started by trying a regular glass tube, which is this first one, and you can see that melted before I did anything. Uh, so I went to borosilicate glass, which is a higher melting point, which is the second one that still melted. So I had to go order quartz tubing online, which is this third one. And while that didn't melt, it, uh, it turns out it's a little smaller than I thought it was. And that's my mistake, I got the wrong dimensions. Uh, so I think the pressure from the oxygen, actually, it ended up actually pushing the diamonds out the other end and they landed on the vinyl tubing that was coming out of it. And you know, of course it's full of pure oxygen at that point. So it kind of caught fire and uh, obviously that was not going to work. Uh, so I ended up with these quartz tubes, these big quartz tubes. And uh, they actually came from uh, this thing, which is a UV lamp for a fish tank. And what it is, is you can see from the picture, it's two quartz tubes and they have a cap on the end. So what I had to do was slice the cap off and then cut it off the bottom here. And that yielded me two nice quartz tubes. And I got this from a friend because it, it had burned out and he was going to throw it away, but I told him to keep it. And uh, so you can see there's some charring in there from where the lamp actually burned out. Also notice that one of these is shorter than the other one, and that's because I screwed up when I was cutting it the first time. <laughs> but the lesson there is that you need a diamond cutting wheel to do it. I used a Dremel with a diamond cutting wheel, and that just sliced right through it, no problem. I tried it with other cutting wheels, and it was, it was a, a disaster. It did not work at all. So you really need the right tool for the job. I wanted to point out too that even though I didn't use this little quartz tube, the company that I got it from was super nice and they allowed me to buy just one tube, uh, a four foot tube that I had to cut myself, but they allowed me to buy one tube. Most of these companies have minimum orders. Uh, so I wanted to uh, do a shout out to uh, Technical Glass Products is the name of the company. 
So a cool way to distinguish between these different types of glasses is to use ultraviolet light. So regular glass and borosilicate glass will block most ultraviolet rays, but quartz glass will not. That's why it's used in that UV light for uh, aquariums. So I have uh, a little ultraviolet light here. This is a, uh, it's got two settings on it. It's got long wave and short wave. Uh, long wave is what's in regular black lights and short wave is a little bit different, more energetic. And I'll be using short wave here because it tends to work better. So if you try this, it may not work with a black light, but I'll show you what happens. So this is a stamp that I got in a set of UV reactive substances. So if we shine the short wave black light on it, you can see it turns green as it fluoresces. Now if I take regular glass and put it over top of it, this is just a jar from the kitchen. And then when I shine the light on it, it doesn't change at all. So you see that that regular glass blocks UV. When I take the glass away, it becomes green. Now if we try that with borosilicate glass, this is a petri dish from the lab. Nothing happens as well. So again, if I take that away, we get the green color, put it there, disappears. So those two block ultraviolet. Now if we try that with a quartz tube, one of the ones from the aquarium light, you see that does not block it. So the whole thing remains green. I know it doesn't cover the whole thing like the other ones do, but you would expect to see at least a stripe of, you know, no green. But this does not block the light. So that's a way to distinguish quartz. We have to use quartz because it has such a high melting point. As you saw, the other two types of tubing, they melted before anything happened. So I need a high melting point material that's transparent, obviously, so you can see it. So quartz tubing is really the, the, the choice for this. And then the final part of this, after the oxygen um, passes through this tube, it's going to enter in this vinyl tubing and go into the gas wash bottle here. What happens is the tubing comes into the inlet port here and it goes down that inner glass tube and it passes through that white disc, which is a frit. It's a, a fine, um, I guess, mesh of glass fibers and that splits up the bubbles a lot. And this is going to be filled with a solution of lime water, which is calcium hydroxide in water. And the way you make lime water is very simple. You just dissolve as much calcium hydroxide as possible into however much water you have. And it's not very soluble at all, so you don't need a lot of it. So generally, I just take a little scoop of hydroxide, put it in the water I want to use, and then let it stir for 20 minutes or something like that. And uh, then I'll filter off the excess. The whole reason I'm doing this is, like I said, so I can capture the gases that come off of this experiment in the lime water. The purpose of the lime water is it's an indicator for carbon dioxide. So if carbon dioxide is present and in the gas that's getting bubbled through it, it'll turn cloudy as calcium carbonate is formed. And finally, the heating is going to be accomplished by a propane torch to the outside of this quartz tube. So let's go ahead and weigh these out. I have to be kind of careful because they're so tiny. I don't want to lose any of them. So we've got 0.1 grams of diamonds. That corresponds to half a carat of diamonds. So here's the assembled apparatus. You see on the left, we've got the oxygen cylinder, which leads via hose to a stopper in the left hand side of my quartz tubing and uh, the diamonds are inside that quartz tubing in the center and then there's another stopper on the right hand side which leads via hose to my gas wash bottle which is currently filled with 100 milliliters of lime water so the idea being oxygen passes into the chamber on the left exits on the right carrying with it any produced co2 that'll bubble through the lime water and if the lime water turns cloudy, that indicates that carbon dioxide was produced. And also off camera, I have a propane torch, which I'll be using to heat the diamonds from below uh, outside the whole system. Now what I'm gonna do is turn the oxygen on just enough so that bubbles start coming out under the water there. So there we go. So now I've got pure oxygen gas bubbling through the lime water. And you can see nothing happens because lime water is only reactive towards CO2. So we've got oxygen flowing. I'll start heating the diamonds. I should be able to heat this pretty strongly because it's quartz tubing. So it's very resistant to thermal shock 
and it melts in an extremely high temperature. But I still, I'll go a little slow just because I want to be careful. So we want to heat these diamonds to the point where they start to glow. beautiful there's little uh, bits of uh, diamond kind of breaking off and sparking that hopefully you can see that as it uh, as the oxygen passes over it and now look in the bottom right corner you see the lime water is starting to cloud up so that tells us we're producing co2 which is exactly what I would expect so that's awesome so this means we're actually burning diamond in a stream of pure oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. And that tells us that diamonds are in fact made of carbon. Now what's really cool about this is if I remove the heat, watch what happens. They continue to burn. So I'm going to actually increase the oxygen flow a little bit. And you see they, they brighten up a little as they continue to burn in the oxygen. There we go. So again, I'll increase the oxygen. That's running out of heat a little bit. So I'll turn the oxygen flow off and then they should calm down. So let's heat these back up. So again, when I remove the heat, they continue to burn. And if I increase the oxygen flow, it gets a little bit brighter. And then as soon as I turn the oxygen off, they die down right away. And now, if we come over and look at the lime water, you see it's totally opaque. There's actually a lot of calcium carbonate that got produced there. You see this, this layer of solids. Something else I need to do um, is decouple this from the wash bottle here. Because if I leave that tube on there, the interior of the quartz is very hot. So as it cools down, it might pull water up through this tube and that would be bad. So let's let this whole setup cool down and then we'll take it back inside and I'll reweigh the diamonds and see what happened. Okay, so here they are after the reaction. Looks to me like they're much smaller, but let's see if that's true. <laughs> oh, it doesn't even register anymore. Let's see if I can get it. Sometimes if you poke at it a little bit, it can settle back on uh, the actual weight. I think it's too small for this scale to measure. So since my scale wasn't sensitive enough to measure this small of a mass, uh, here's a visual comparison between what it was before and after. So you can definitely see that these are way smaller now. So since I couldn't weigh the diamonds afterwards, I went to plan B and I filtered all of the lime water solution that was in the wash bottle to get any calcium carbonate that had precipitated. And here it is. Not a whole lot, but we'll see if we can weigh this instead. There 
There we go, that's something. So 0.12 grams of calcium carbonate. So I'm gonna go do some stoichiometry and I will be right back. All right, so here's all my calculations for all the reactions that are going on. The top reaction is the lime water plus carbon dioxide. It gives us calcium carbonate and water. And since we measured that it was 0.12 grams of calcium carbonate produced, if you follow the math there, we end up with 0.053 grams of CO2 was absorbed by the solution. I used 100 milliliters of lime water for the wash bottle. And so that means at room temperature, according to the solubility of calcium hydroxide, that's a maximum of 0.165 grams that was dissolved in that solution. So if you do the math on that, that means there is 0.22 grams is the maximum amount of calcium carbonate that we could have produced. So I didn't exceed that value. So I think that this is a valid result. Now, if we could take that back to the burning diamond reaction, that's the one on the bottom. Carbon plus oxygen gives us CO2. Uh, so our 0.053 grams of CO2 uh, ends up at 0.014 grams of carbon that was burned. So that is a tiny amount. I mean, if you remember, we started with 0.1 grams of diamonds and now the mass is not really measurable. So I think I at least got rid of 0.09 grams or something like that. Um, so this represents only a small fraction of what was actually burned. And I think, you know, I didn't, I didn't capture all of the CO2. I think a lot of it probably escaped because the, the bubbles maybe weren't fine enough or the flow of oxygen was too strong and it pushed it out before it could be absorbed. And also what I just discovered is that apparently excess carbon dioxide causes the uh, chalk that's produced to dissolve again as calcium bicarbonate. So as this reaction progresses, some of the calcium carbonate actually gets re-dissolved. So it turns out that measuring the mass of the chalk that was produced is not really a great way of doing this either. So there you have it. You can actually burn diamonds. Turns out they are not forever at all. So this is a good way to uh, dispose of some old diamonds that you don't want anymore. So I hope you enjoyed and thanks a lot for watching.